All right. Hey, good morning, Ambassadors Worship Center. How are we doing this morning? Can we just take 10 seconds and praise God just for a second? Give him a shout of praise in the building. Come on. If you're happy for your family, Hallelujah. if you're happy for your position in your family, Glory if you're happy for what God said about Hallelujah. your family, if you're happy about the finances in your ha- their family, the dog, the fleas on the cat, all of it. Can somebody say, I love my family? I said, say, I love my family. All right, you can take a seat. Now, I know that there are a couple people in the room that when you heard somebody in your family say, I love you, you were like, yeah, that's cat. But it's okay. Um, we're, we're super excited because this is the second week of our family series. Um, the theme this year is called Family, can somebody say forever? Forever. Long story short, what that means is that the people that you landed on earth with, look at your neighbor and say, that's it. That's it. Um, we, we are using kingdom principles to explain what family is can look like and should look like but one thing we want to make sure that you understand that this sermon series there's no judgment there's no heat on it because if you are if you are one person you are an entire family and we're hoping that in today that we can unbox a little bit more of this conversation but first and foremost didn't our pastors do an amazing job last week (laughs) wasn't it awesome now by a show of hands and hoots and hollers how many of you guys love the vulnerable story that they have okay how many of you would like to hear more of their vulnerable story in the near future how many married couples would like to hear the vulnerable stories in the, that they have? Okay, cool. All right, so I'll, I'll make it. I set their schedule, so we'll make it work. So um, really quick, I want to share with you the objectives for today because uh, we want to make sure that as a family that we are helping you set the template for yours. As Pastor Martin said earlier, um, it's not about perfection. It's about progression. So wherever your family is, we want to make sure that you know, all of you that are watching online and in the room, that wherever you start is perfect. Look at your neighbor and say, here is perfect. Doesn't matter where you start, it's perfect. So we want to give you a couple of of objectives. Now, this is one thing I want you to think about. How does a family define their purpose for being together? And then how does the family create clarity for each one of the family members? It's one thing for one person in the family to have vision for the family. But how many of you guys know that it's important that everybody in the family knows why we're together? Here are a couple of the objectives. I want you to write these down because we're hoping to answer some of these questions today. First and foremost is to help all of us as families answer the question of why are we here? You might have asked that question before, but like, I know I married you, but like, why? I know that you're my mom and my dad, but why? We're hoping that today through the word of God, we can answer that question. The second objective is to help you establish that you, that your family has a reason for being here. You didn't just get married and have kids for no reason. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a reason reason for my family. For my family. Then the last part is to help us as families figure out how to structure our families so that we can reach the objectives that God has for our life. So today's sermon title today is Purposed Forever. Purposed Forever. There are multiple different times in our families. How many of you guys are going through a season right now? And all the hands went up. If you ain't putting your hands up, I bless you, and I ask you to sprinkle some of that on us. But if you are in family, we are forever in situations, coming out of one season, going into another. But it's also God's grace that helps us go through. Um, Dr. Dr. Martin's uh, mentor, Dr. Monroe, has taken this word purpose, and he's literally boiled it down, and he's made it into like a million different meals, but I want to give you a definition this morning. So purpose defined is the reason, because somebody say the reason. The reason. It's the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. The second definition is that it is it has a particular requirement or consideration. The third is that the it's, uh, purpose of something is the original intent or the objective meant for something. I want you to write these, thing, these three these three things down. My family has a reason for being here. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. When you decided to become a family, when your children came, when you decided to be married, or if you're single, you were a family. Somebody say, I am a family. The next thing is that, write this down. My family has certain requirements. Every family isn't created equal. Pastors wrote a book about marriages being uh, not married. Marriages are not created equal. So that means that what one, what, what makes one marriage work doesn't make another. And how many of you guys know one parenting style that you see on TV doesn't work with your kids? Amen. Because it's not a one size fit all. The third is I want you to write down is that our family has an objective. You have reason, you have requirements for your family, but each and every one of us has a God-given purpose, a God-given reason for being here. And look at your neighbor and say, you have to fulfill it. You have to. Every single family has a purpose for being together. And we're hoping that we can unbox that today. Okay, so uh, the the first point we want to talk about uh, with your family, with, huh? So the first point we want to talk about 
is vision for your family, what vision looks like. So vision is given, vision is literally given to one person in the family. Today, I'm going to break this down. It should come from the father. The father or the man of the house should be, vision should come through him. But all of our families aren't built like that. I didn't grow up in one that was necessarily built like that. My oldest sister raised us, but she had a vision. She reminded us of that vision uh, all the time. And her vision was very simple. Live a long time and live saved. So, but that was enough. That vision was enough to keep the four of us, all of us living for God, all of us walking in peace. And the scripture we want to use today to sort of build this is Genesis 6. Genesis 6 and 9 and the story of Noah and his family. So you can, uh, you can read about Noah and his family and how that was whole thing put together. Let me back up a little bit. Let me back up a little bit. Now, when I, when I say the man of the house or the father of the house or whatever that is, that's the model of God, right? Uh, and if your house is not set up that way, that's fine. Thirdly, this is no pressure on men. I'm not trying to put pressure on the men in the room. That's not what this is. Uh, some, of, some men, and I'm jealous of some men, when they share their vision with their family, it's in a PowerPoint, a T-shirt. They got a, <laughs> you know, they write a song. They, I mean, it's like, like, wow, I wish I could. That's a lot. So some men are really organized that way. They're really, they, they have that. Some men, they go to their wives and they talk to them and they say, this is what I see. Can you help me communicate that to our family? Are we on the same page, right? And some men may be very simple, shy, uh, uh, introverted. Um, they may not say a lot. They may not even be able to articulate everything that's in their heart. And all of these men are perfect for your family. Don't ever compare your man to anybody else's. That's good. All right, don't compare him. Don't compare him because it'll just keep shutting him down. It'll shut him down if you don't believe in him, right? Uh, your father, your husband, or whatever. You just believe in him and hear what he says. Listen to how he thinks. And then you can craft a vision and he'll be like, wow, that's exactly what I believe for my family, right? So, but Noah, Noah was the first one to hear from God about God's plan for him. Uh, the, the ninth verse says, this is the account of Noah and his family. Genesis 6 and 9 says, this is the account of Noah and, and his family. God showed and told Noah to build the ark. The trick was getting his family to do it with him. Get that show out of your mind that's on whatever that was. What was the name of that movie? We watched it. Evan Almighty? Evan Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's not the picture. No, that's not the picture. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't the picture. We don't see any resistance of Noah's three sons at what God told him to do. Right. We don't see any resistance from his wife. We don't, we don't read that in there. Somehow he was able to get his family to do something that had never been done to prepare for rain that had never been seen, mm -hmm. but they all got it done. It took them 120 years. No. <laughs> it, it took them a while to do it, but they did it. So in that, in that case, I just want to remind you of a couple things. It was his righteous living that caused God to keep covenant with him. The Bible says he was righteous. Men, righteous and men don't miss next Sunday. But righteous doesn't mean perfection. Mm -hmm. Righteous meant he just wanted to stand right before God. Right, yeah. So even in his mistakes, he'd say, I blew it. I'll fix that, right? He was righteous before God. So now it's his responsibility to paint this picture of an ark. They'd never, been, never seen one. They went around water. Paint this picture of rain, flood. Paint, I mean, how does a guy paint that picture for his family? Especially when he's never seen it. He's never seen he's it. never seen rain before. Right. Men will never see the vision of God that he's talking to them about. Right. Somebody else needs that. I heard a clap over here somewhere. Well, he... 
when he's talking to his wife, and if, if, there's, if there's not a wife in his life and he's talking to his children, he, he has to try to explain something he was told. Right. Mm. Not something he's seen. Right. Now, if you, got, if you married a smart, powerful woman. That sees everything. And she <laughs> gives birth to smart, powerful children. You in for some work, brother. You're going to have to explain this thing often. You're going to have to talk about it all day. So what would you say? You were saying something. I would say about Noah, um, I, I would imagine that his family, you were talking about they were in agreement. And our family has not always been in agreement because we weren't Noah and his family. But I was thinking about Noah and I said, well, how did he not have any friction or any pulling and conflict as we read in the Bible? But it could have been that Noah's wife and his children, sons and daughters, they had history that dad had never led them down a dark road. Dad had never broken his word. And if, like you were saying, even when men, it's not a, you're not righteous because you, you live some perfect life, but he was maybe as a man or a husband and a father that was perfect in admitting when he missed it. And so he had that type of intimate relationship with his family, which I would say is uh, probably the template of our family. We do not have a perfect husband and a perfect father, a perfect daughter, son, a daughter-in-law who couldn't be with us this morning because she worked overnight that we love just dearly. But we have seen your history. You have a track record with us that we trust that. And when we can trust that because we believe that you're trusting him. Okay, so I'll give the full point. I'll oh. read the whole full point. There we go. A vision? Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Please. A vision. Vision <laughs> is given to one and confirmed by others. Are you, you happy? Yeah, because he didn't say it before, right? Yeah. Right. Oh, y'all going to leave me out here to dry. Okay, cool. No worries. They heard no, what I was saying. Okay. That's a good point. I don't take it personally. Sorry. So, so let me, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, so here's the deal. God, verse 10, Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Mm -hmm. He's their father. These boys are married to other women. And then God tells Noah, I've decided to destroy the earth. Only you and your family is going to be left. Now, yeah, that's a hard conversation, right? So now he has to explain that and get his family on board. Obviously, he does that. Mm -hmm. He gets his family on board. Men do whatever. Mom, auntie, grandma, whoever's in the head of that house, yes. do everything you can to get everybody on board. You can survive anything if you're together. That's good. You can survive anything when you're together. And don't let nobody mess you up on that. So in our family, I'll just throw this out, and I'm going to give you three things so we can move on. We got some of the important stuff to, to say. In, in our family, people would ask me and us often, Who, who's the Williams? What's your vision? What, why is this family built? If Noah was building a boat, what is the Williams family building? And I would simply say to people, we are, we are advocates. Mm-hmm. Our whole family, we're advocates. We stand and teach the truth regardless to who likes it or doesn't. We stand for that truth. We try to help the unprotected. Every, everywhere we go, no matter who we are, and I know all of their gifts, I understand them intimately, and I get to see this advocacy play out in their lives in so many different ways, which is really, which is really my job along with her. So men, if you're going to make this happen, or, or f heads of families, households, if you're going to make this happen, you need to do three things. You need to share the vision caringly. 
like you care. In other words, keep, share the vision with care. Mm. Share the vision because you care for your family. Never see anyone's failure as a problem. It's not a problem. We can survive anything as long as we're together, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to share the vision, not like the families behind, but just like the families walking together. Mm-hmm. Son, this is the vision for our house. That's why we do this or don't do that. This is the vision for our house, Callie, and it's going to matter. It's going to matter who you bring into the family. All these things matter as we're doing that. So share it caringly. Share it clearly. As clear as you can articulate it, be clear about what you see. God told Noah the the description of of the ark. You may not have all the descriptions, but you just want to share that vision. And then lastly, share it consistently. All the time. What does that mean to you? What does consistently mean to you, Callie? Did I wear you out or something over the Most years? Definitely. I was about to say, yes. But um, I was just personally telling, I agree. With consistency, I think that's something that a lot of children value in parenting. It can really help us develop as human beings to have a consistent steadfast understanding what we are and aren't supposed to be doing. Like, even if we do stray away, even if we do choose to ex- explore, which is going to happen, it's all, it, was, it just brought so much, I don't know, peace or um, understanding. It, it wasn't like when I went to school and I saw different things that, you know, other kids were doing. It wasn't like I was just in the wind. Because I can bring a lot of chaos for a, a child, I think. So I do think consistency and always just reinforcing in your child, like, why we're doing certain things and what's Mm. the full meaning. Just not pointing your fingers and giving demands, but like you're saying, being clear, being caring, like, all of that. The kid, I think, from my perspective, uh, your kids can feel that, and it's really important to be consistent with it. Like, don't give up on your kids just because they turn 18. Don't give up on them just because they get a cell phone. Don't give up on them just because they tell you they're grown. Like, we're not grown and we really do value that consistency even if our face doesn't show it even if our attitude doesn't show it so mm. yeah and, and I, I just I want to I want to set one thing really straight if, if you go back to verse <laughs> I'm, I'm, this is great if you go back to verse 12 it says God observed all of this corruption in the world for everyone on earth somebody say everyone everyone for everyone on earth was corrupt mm. but Noah Had Noah's family been corrupt, they would have been saved by his righteousness. Mm. So, Dad, I just want to, Dad, if you were the, if you were the, somebody, if you were the head of the household, raise your hand. Your righteous living keeps your family together. Wow. That's I I just want to make sure you know. Um, I'm 28 years old, but they say that my brain isn't fully developed until 35. I believe it, or whatever. It's, yeah, yeah, whatever. But I will tell you this. When the person in the house is sturdy, consistent, caring, and they never move, it gives me the ability to act out. So, mm. Dad, the reason why your children, gives your you wife, the, gives me the ability to. Gives not me the, the freedom, ability. Gives me the availability, freedom. Let me, let me finish what I'm about to say. Sometimes the reasons why your children are acting out of pocket is because they feel safe with you. Okay, that's different. Mm-hmm. So when your children bring alcohol to you, Dad, I'm an alcoholic, mm. trust that they trust you to bring that to you. And trust that your righteous living can be enough to help them get over what they're going through. I just want to make sure that you understand, Noah's family wasn't saved because they were righteous. Noah's family was saved because he was righteous. So dad, it's very important that you know God and know God for yourself. Wow. Some of the best, worst times of my life were areas where the sermon did nothing for me. And Pastor Martin didn't come to me, my daddy came to me and he told me who I was in the dark room. So, Dad, look at yourself. Mom, look at yourself. Person that's the head of your household, look at yourself and say, I am righteous for my family. I want to go to point number two. Before you move, Josh, I want to say you you just made a very relevant point. All of us sitting in this room, starting with me, you said Noah was raising, uh, he was fathering a family in a very unrighteous world. And the gauge of where we are today as believers, I believe, is probably worse than Noah. Either way, 
We're living in a very whacked out world. And the Bible says we are in this crazy whacked out world, but yet as heads of the household, we can take a righteous stand and not be contaminated first and foremost in our thinking and then walking it out. You understand? You can do this. We can do this. We can be a light in a very dark world. And I think now, it, believers, we can just stand out and shine bright because there is just chaotic darkness, deep darkness all around us. And I want to be the light. I don't want to be a religious person, but I want to be a light on a hill for many. Okay, so somebody say, we have to know what we're building. Now, I, I love the Bible. Does anybody else love the Bible? Like, I... I I love the word of God because it's so specific. One thing we know, the family didn't have to be righteous. Dad was. He teaches them righteousness. They're taken care of. Dad's pro Noah's responsibility was to share a vision. Correct. Awesome. But vision means nothing. Rain means nothing if you don't know what you're building. In our families, one of the reasons why we are able to do what we do is in a lot of seasons, we don't know what we're building. But we always listen to the voice of reason in our family to be reminded of, hey, remember what the blueprint is. Remember what we're building. So God gives Noah specifics on what to build. Let's go to verse 14. He says what? Build a large boat. Say it with me. Build a large boat. boat. Did he say a tank? No. Did he say a sailboat? No. Did, 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 he, did he say a, no. a four by four built for tough Dodge Ram? Whatever God has told you to build, he will always provide specifics, the materials, and the instructions to build it. Build a large, somebody scream, boat. Boat. From cypress wood, not mahogany. Well, God, mahogany's cheaper. I told you what to use. I, I told you what to do. But God, we can afford 3,000 more square feet. I told you 2,500 was fine, but you can do what you want to do. That's what God does all the time. You parents do it all the time. You can do, and you know. Build a large boat from, somebody say Cyprus. Cypress. Cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Isn't it interesting that God tells them what to build for the animals before he tells them that they're going to have animals? Sometimes the vision that comes from the man of God, woman of God, whoever the person is in your house will come with specifics, but you don't know the why. And that is okay. Mm. You said to build 12 stalls for what? Don't worry about it. I give, I'm giving you instructions. I don't even know why I'm building 12 stalls. Trust me, I'm married now and I get it. Yeah, a I don't bit. know. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18-inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. But, I'm sorry, put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. I want you to write this down. God will always provide specific materials and instructions for what you're building. Mm -hmm. One easy way to know that it didn't come from God is that he didn't tell you how to do it. It's very, very simple. You don't multiple know. times, our, uh, our parents, and I'm just going to speak on our behalf. Mm -hmm. There are multiple times where our, our father and our mother would say certain things, and they would say this, and this is valid. I don't know if this is the Holy Spirit, but I think it is. If you're not sure, mom and dad, grandma, foster parent, guess what? It's okay. But what's not okay is to talk to us as your children like you're sure, but we talk to the same God you talk to. I know what I'm doing. Well, that's not what God told me. The next thing I want you to write down is this. It is important that the... Go ahead. I, I just want to ask you to say that again. I want to make sure I understand that, what you just said. Sure. Say that again. Your parents will tell you something. And they'll say that it's God. But you hear from God yourself. Correct. And you don't think it is? Not saying that it's not, but mm -hmm. we hear from God as well. So if we go back to point number one, if the vision yeah. is given to one person, sometimes right. I can confirm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But okay, so you're not saying that you can say God didn't tell you, Dad. That's not my job. Okay, good. All I can say is that that's not necessarily what I heard by interpretation. And then what do you do? We ask and we talk about it. And then after that, I submit to what you have to say. Where are you trying to go? What are you trying to say? That's it. I was just wanted. Okay. I'm, I'm just talking to you. Yeah. See, this my is a, this is a wonderful example. This, <laughs> this is not. Goes this is saying, Jason. This is real church, right? I forgot y'all was out there. Because I needed to understand that. No, no, I'm going to use this like uh, uh, PJ was what? explaining. 
uh, a father can say, we're going this way. But when there is uh, your healthy family unit, a child, a son can say, no, but that. dad, I was praying the other day and da, 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 da. It's an opportunity to engage in dialogue. It's not disrespectful, but the one thing we do is we vision must be talked about. <laughs> you, we don't just blindly follow, but the spirit bears witness. So this is a good yeah. point of interest. Right. That was sexy, sexy, sexy. Dang. But Josh, that was... That's no, like, don't try to edify me now. That man done stripped me down and no, told me what I'm not. No, don't, don't no do but that. that's what I was getting at. I just wanted no, you, you to weren't. say... And you said it in the end. No, you weren't. Yeah. Welcome to the living room. That was... Uh-huh. Welcome to the Williams family meeting, just for all of you. Okay, go ahead. So the point of why it's so important to know what you're building is that if each person in your family has the ability to bring their resources and their skills, if we all think that we're building something different, it, we, we, we will be building a Lego set with four different sets. <laughs> it'll have a propeller over here, it'll have a sail over here, it'll have a green Martian over here, and then when we're done building it, we can look at it and say like, well, you said God told us to build it. But this is what I was trying to say. Mm. God gives the vision to the man of God, but that does, not, that does not mean that he doesn't speak to all of us individually. So multiple times as you're building, Noah had to say to his son, hey, I want you to go down 450 feet and do this. Yes. If he got to a point where something didn't make any sense, he didn't just continue hammering. He stopped what he did, came back to Pops and said, now this is what I think, but remind me of what we're building. Mm. You can save... We, let, let me say this correctly, <laughs> our family saved a bunch of time by, stop, by not building in some seasons. Yes. And sometimes there's a pressure when you see the Joneses on the opposite side of the street building something and their grass is green, but you don't know that they've murdered people and it's actually dead bodies under the ground that's fertilizing the grass. So we have learned in certain seasons, this is what I mean. In 1999 or, or 2000, our parents told us, hey, we have, a, we have a decision. We're making a decision that financially the Williams are going to be here. Integrally, we're going to be here. We're going to be advocates. So since that's what we're building, there are some things that we will require for our family. Remember what I talked about before? Whatever you're building will come with instructions. Sometimes if you want to be financially free in your family, that means that it's no more McDonald's and you got to eat it at McHome. Yeah. <laughs> But they did an amazing job of communicating it to us so that when we were eating ham sandwiches at the house and when we passed McDonald's, we didn't ask because we didn't think we could afford it. We didn't ask because we were looking to build to afford more. And we had agreement. We had agreement. So if we were ever, and it happened a couple times, when everybody's eating dinner and we're done and then you go to throw the trash away and you see a McDonald's McFlurry cup, you have the right to go and ask, hey, who ate this Oreo? You know I like Oreo. This is my favorite. Who stepped outside of the budget? Because we are all responsible. We are all responsible for if this boat sinks or swims. We talk about how they built a boat, but they were responsible for it not going under. So look at your neighbor and say, it's okay. It's okay. In some seasons. In some seasons. For me and my, me and my family to chill out and stop. Mm. You don't have to build all the time just for the sake of building. Just because you think somebody's boat is bigger, their finances are bigger, their, their, their wife is prettier. Like, I'm learning that now, even as a husband. But we got to know what we're building. Mm, mm, mm. That is so good. Uh, a, a couple of thoughts that I had. What does it mean to build? We keep using that term. It means to construct, to use uh, for designing something or the process of fitting parts together. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, first thing I thought about was Lowe's. Lowe's got all kinds of parts, all kinds of supplies, all kinds of tools and equipment. But when, if, if all, how many hundreds of us in here today would go into Lowe's, we, were, we would probably all be going in for certain things that we need for what what? We are building, right? Mm. And so uh, if I got to the, uh, the counter and you wanted to give me your supplies and you don't know what I'm trying to build, it wouldn't be a benefit to me. And too often in the office 
space and in college campuses, uh, you, you engage with people and they're talking to you about your family and they're trying to get you to use tools and supplies and concepts of what they have done in their family that's already whacked out and you to bring them home and try to interject them into this family and we get further behind. You are so right, uh, PJ. Yeah. We have to know if we're building a boat, we are not building a canoe. No. It's a totally different concept. So we have to make sure that we stay true mm -hmm. to what we're doing mm -hmm. in our families. To build means to construct, fabricate, right. form, manufacture, create, fashion, model, mold, and shape. That's a lifetime in a family. Right. You never stop doing this. You've got to put the work in. You, you understand? You, you have to make up our minds, and we all have a part of that work. And Kelly, why are you looking at me like that? But we have to do it. Uh, really, really, in really, every person. Really quick. Can you share, because there was a time in our lives where you were telling us, I remember you would tell us, like, we don't need to buy that, but we can afford it. And you were trying to build appreciation in us. You remember my, oh, real quick. Do you remember my friend when his dad got the brand new Porsche and I felt some type of way because I was like, man, we deserve a Porsche. You remember that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you remember the conversation you had with me? No. You don't? <clears throat> so Reminded. a friend of mine, got a, his dad got a Porsche. It was so dope. And he was like, hey, bro, do you want to come to my house? And I was like, uh, duh, yeah, I do. So I went to his house and I saw the Porsche and his dad's like revving it up and whatnot. And um, I came home <laughs> and I was like, dad, like, why don't we have a Porsche, bro? Like, why don't, actually, that's how he talked. I was like, dad, why don't we have a Porsche? Why don't we have a Ferrari? And you showed me our accounts. And then you also told me, you said, he's probably leasing it, but I want to own it. So can you share a little bit about how you got our family to fall in love with what we were building and not look at other stuff? Because there's some pretty, how many of y'all know that some people got some pretty boats out here? You're building your boat, but you see them boats, you're like, man, they got a cigar lounge. <laughs> I mean, you know, we don't smoke, but you know, like, wow. It'd be nice just to see it. How did you build in us to look at what we're building and have appreciation with it at every level? Uh, I care for you. I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I mean, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clear about what God told me to build in my oh, family. Very clear. I may not always be able to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. And all three of y'all are smarter than me. That's beautiful, but I'm clear about what I want in my family. Jesus said, greater work shall you do. And, and I'm consistent every yeah. time. Right. So what I had to get, what I had to say to you constantly was, I will call you, text you, whether you're at middle school or in college, in the Ooh, dorm, we? I will call you and text you and ask you one question. One question. Yeah, I would just call... Me. I would ask one Kelly, question. Say it together. Don't fail this question. What is it? I would ask you, uh-uh, 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 uh, you can't cheat. Keep going. I would ask you both one question, and that question would be what? Who, who are what? you? Who are you? That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> I just wanted, who are you? Yeah, we got it. And... What answer was I looking for? I oh, no, 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 no. Pick up the mic. So what answer was I looking for? The right one. <laughs> you were looking for an answer that proved that all the time that you spent with us was there. A and what Williams. was that answer? A Williams. That's a Williams. all That's I was looking I for. I was looking for... Who are you? Wherever you are, who are you there? Oh, William. Who are you Whatever in the you're dorm? doing, whoever who are, you're with. Who are you? And all I was looking for was, I'm a Williams. That's who I am, no matter yeah. where I am. And I'll put us out there. In the times where we couldn't say it, they would always come and get us. You, if you can't say... If you can't say that you're... I didn't make parties, Stacey? No. People house. Yeah, I got to come get you. Concerts. Right. It, I didn't pay for a ticket. Security coming behind him in the concert. Come on, you come on. Like, Dad, we're in a concert. I don't care. Come home. <laughs> you did not answer my question correctly. I was trying to do stuff. Man. So I came to get you. <laughs> it, it, it is the father's job. It yeah. is the father's job. Yeah, oh, I know you were trying to. You were in there, yeah, boy. Yeah. 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 But see, to I, can't, I can't. I <laughs> can't. 
I can't let you bring a girl or a baby or a boy in this that's going to mess it up for everybody. So I, it's, it's, it's the father's job to know where his children are, not the police department. That's my job. I need to know where you are. Hey, let me chime in here. You are so right. And all of you under yes. 50, still let your mama and daddy's house or whatever, whatever. You have an obligation too to under tell us where you are. I'm making a point here, Josh. This, this crazy dark world we're in, you think, little girl, you somebody. And you play these games with this cell phone, turning off your tracking system and all this foolishness. You are limiting your longevity on this earth. You don't know the big, listen to me, listen to me. You don't know the kind of world you dancing around out there. So don't play this game looking at the phone and deciding when you're going to answer your mama's call. You're headed for a wall. If you don't answer your mama's call, you're headed for a wall. If you don't answer your mama's Woo! call, you're headed for a wall. Uh. All right? Hey! If you don't answer your mama's call, you're headed for a wall. If you don't answer your mama's call, you're headed Sorry. for a wall. You got to take you're your moments when you see them. <laughs> but do you remember? Uh, Give it up one time for Pastor Linnell. Go for it. Oh, All you no. online, go for it. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody say, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. So there were multiple moments where we were wilding, you know, doing what you ain't supposed to do. And I remember my daddy <laughs> grabbing by my shirt one time. Grab my shirt. In the chest. Grab my shirt. Your shirt? I was driving, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and this man punched me in my chest. And it's just like, oh, he doesn't care. And he, and th these are the words that he said. He said, if you keep living this way, I'll have to give your inheritance to your kids. And I will. Now, I was 18, <laughs> right? And I'm like, uh, I don't know what that means. But then we got back to the house. And he says, if you do not want to help us build what God told us to build, everything that you were supposed to inherit, you will have to watch your children have fun with it and ask them for portions of what was supposed to be for you. So this concept of thinking that it's better outside of the house, better outside of the house. it will always be a lie. Come on. Regardless Unless, of what your family's going through. It's a lie. Right. Because the world does not work with you by yourself when you have family. Mm. If you don't have family, that's a different story. I know that some of us come from beaten and battered backgrounds. We come from where there was drugs or abuse in the house. That's a different story. But if you have a family that cares enough about you to ask you to check in, when you leave there, when the boat is built and they close the door, you can't do this. Let me in. That is so good. You should have been there to build with us. Hallelujah. You left. Yes. And we had to get somebody yes. else to do your job. Sorry. Go ahead. Mm. Sorry. No, that's so good. Mm. Mm. I didn't have nothing to say. Mm. I was just saying amen. My mm. mic was just on. Mm. You can't leave us. You can't leave us in this time. Then we build the boat, and you want to take selfies with the boat. Look what me and my look what I did. Look what me and my family did. And it's like somebody say you weren't building with us. Listen, so it's important that you give me a job, Josh, so I, I just, can help you build this I boat. Guess when you said that selfie thing, Sorry. the Spirit of the Lord said there are some bodies, persons in here this morning. You are about to be left outside the boat. That's good. You of are trying family. to bring other people and things and vices and practices into a boat that will not be allowed. And you're going to jeopardize your own well-being trying to bring all that baggage. Mm. This is your opportunity to drop it and get an alignment with the vision of the house. The Bible says, and if we, it's a commandment with promise, right? Mm -hmm. is it, when Linnell was a, a, a little girl, I made a decision to obey my mother and my father. 
And I'm like you thinking right now, they weren't, they weren't that smart, not like me. But smartness never outweigh the original model of the family that God put in place. Your daddy may not be a CEO. That's good. But he's your daddy. Your daddy. And the righteous order of God is that we should honor and obey, even and more so when we don't understand. And it'll be safety for you. Oh, man. So think about that. Pause. Rest in that. We're, your mother and father, now I know, and I hope you guys know, we were not trying to hurt you. We were not trying to throw ice water on your party. Mm. We could see some things, as they say, down the road that you couldn't see. So help us love you with ease. Help us parent you with joy. And it, you'll get a big payoff. So, uh, this is sort of how it has to work. Can we mess the camera people up for a minute? Oh, yeah, let's I do don't it. Know. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. Come help me, Kevin, please. You're going to be God. We don't think he's black or white, but we're going to let you play him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So God provides everything the house of the, the, the leader of the household needs. This is God. The man in the house leans on him. That's why this man can say, Man, I really missed it. I apologize. I repent. I can get better. I'm sorry. A proud man doesn't know God. Because once a man knows God, he will repent. God, I just missed that. He'll look at his wife and say, honey, I just missed that. Please forgive me. Now, the wife leans on the man while he's leaning on God. So who's holding this up? God. The children can get everything they need from their mother. Oh my. So I can't say, I can't say I'm really taking care of my children if I'm not taking care of their mom. Because without me, they get everything. They get strong, they get breasts, they get everything. They get milk, right? They get everything from their mother. So if God gives me a vision, it's my job to make sure they know we're leaning on him. Okay, we can let go. That was a good job, Kevin. <laughs> but can I draw something from that? Yeah. Dad, sometimes the reason why your boys go to your wife first is because sometimes what they have to say needs to go through a soft filter to get to you. That order is so amazing because sometimes what my sister needs to say to my mom, it actually has to come through me. Me and Martin are alike. Callie and Linnell are alike. So how many of you guys have children that are just like you? They're the ones that you discipline more often, right? Okay. But then ultimately, if the train stops at him, we, we're dead. Mm -hmm. Fathers, just take us to God in prayer for us, please. When you're praying, it's like, say my name. I don't, I'm, we're young, we're dumb, Miss Denise. We, we're still developing. So yeah. we don't know what we need. But if you have a righteous relationship with God, I trusted that when I was going crazy, that Martin was on his knees. God, please help that boy. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I'm sitting I'm in. Still on my knees, yeah. man. I'm still on my hey, knees. Let me Yo. let me say this about what you just said. <laughs> this is tough. A family, everybody, every individual in the family 
in your family, you have to model the vision. Yeah. What do good. I mean by that? That's good. Specifically, the adults in the house must act as role models that demonstrate the behaviors consistent with the vision. Now, how would y'all say that, Mother Alice? You would say, don't, don't tell me, don't do as I say, do, do as I say not as you see me do. So this would take care of that. Our families, husbands, your wives, uh, children, your father, we need to see consistency. Even in time schedules. You know, we can't have family dinner if we never know what time you're going to come home. You know what I'm saying? We need consistent modeling. Um, and we talk about in the, in the kingdom principles, what is a kingdom woman? What is, you know what? You have to look at yourself first. And we should see some similarities in each other. The wives at that church, they don't do that. The husbands, those guys love their wives. They take care of their families. They stand tall in the community. That's the culture. That's the culture. So we have to do this together in order to make an impact on our sons and our daughters. So, and it's a beautiful thing, don't you think? I agree. It's a beautiful thing. I think we major on the wrong stuff. What if you don't ever get, oh, what if oh, you don't you ever. what you said last week? What, baby? You said something so tough yesterday. Me and Vanessa were like, this house too big. You said if you have the ability to bypass people in your family to go to the kitchen, the house is too big. Do you remember that last week? I said something like that. When I, the house is beautiful. The car is beautiful. But if we have two cars, but we're never in the same car together, that had me tough. Vanessa came home to me. She says, we need to drive more places together. I was like, yes, ma'am, we do. We, sh we sure do. Amen. And you're going to drive if you're watching. <laughs> yeah. So... So I know we got to get to the fourth point because do Callie will wait until she'll have a lot in her head. She won't say it. Say something, Callie. I'll set you up. So, so you all at this table know that, huh? You all at this table know that I have a 300-year plan for our family. 500. Well, we're, 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 if we can get the 300, a long plan. We might have to let you guys work on the other, but. <laughs> I have a 300-year plan for my family in, in a lot of different ways. You all know that. But if I'm asking you to go shop with your mother and go to the high school you were going to where everybody dressed real ritzy and had on Man. $300 shoes, if I'm asking you to go and buy $60 shoes and we're going to save the rest mm -hmm. because we're working on this plan. Mm -hmm. Working on our boat. You, you cannot come home and see me pull up in a Porsche. That is so you can't, good. I, I can't ask you to participate in a vision that I'm giving you. That you're not. And you come home and I got on Air Jordan. And you're not modeling the vision. Right. So that's why I wore the nicest shoes from Walmart. But they were clean. Because we were in this together. Now, your mom was a different story. I'm telling you, she was spinning the duckies all right. Garage sales, thrift sales. I'm kidding. What I, she's I able to do. I can't help it if you still forgot. Don't do it to me. Don't do that, it to me. You know, those consignment shops. I, and the, I, I was getting ready to say the, that. The big no, no, no. GW, let me, let the me do it. Let me do it. Come on let now. Let me do it. Let me do it. Now she dressed. She rises up early in the morning. Oh we go down God. to the Goodwill, look through all the racks, and see, woo, that's my find for the day. Take it on Hold down on. to oh. the dry cleaner. So you guys are going to support Discord in our Walk family? in the church, and wow. everybody thought I had been wow. down the Vaughn Mar. Wow. No, no, no. I had just been over the GW. Goodwill. 
Hey, and them Goodwills past 156. Got, hey, I ain't, I ain't going to. Hey. My, my wife would go to the Goodwills in the good neighborhoods. And then, you know, they're different. And then whenever we would travel, she would say, where are the Goodwills in the good neighborhoods? Where, where's those shops, secondhand shops? So she always had really nice stuff that she low. paid little for. Oh, for the what? For the, low for the low low. And she bought that kind of stuff for you guys and for me. But the bottom line is we all have to participate right. in this family vision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You only need one diva in the family. I right. just ended up with three. <laughs> 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 yes. 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 I'll take it. Are we having lunch today? Today together? We need to meet. We need to. Right, we'll, 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 we'll have a family meeting. We'll talk about. Yeah, Keep we'll talk going. about that one. But say this with me. Hey. It is possible to build a forever family. <laughs> right. It's it's possible to build a family. Mm -hmm. The the Queen of England has a she's part of a 700 year plan so far. And she has a 500 year plan for her family after she dies. Mm -hmm. We can do the same. We can make a plan and it may look small now but in our next generation it grows. It grows. It grows. It grows. It grows. We can cause that to happen. So that's what I'm encouraging. So we're at number four. No, we're at number three, sir. I know. See, Josh wrote the notes, and he is saying to me, you're not going over all my notes. So I'll let you finish the notes. <laughs> Somebody say number three. God provides for families who provide him a place. I want you to write this one down. It is going to be impossible for us to build a forever family without a covenant with God. You cannot build a forever family without a forever relationship with God. It works for some people, but for us, God is pivotal. We go to church. We read our Bibles. We live saved. That's what we do. Verse 17, it says, look, I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die. But I will confirm my, somebody say covenant. My covenant. I will confirm my covenant with you. This is God to Noah. So enter the boat. You, your wife, and who else? Your, son, your sons and their, their wives. wives. Look at your neighbor. Say, we got to take everyone. Woo! This is why. That's the work right the there. The family Woo. had to fall in love with my wife before I married her. Now. Because if they don't accept okay. her in the boat, I got to drown yeah. too. Yeah. It, no, 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 no. Okay. You, you need to clean that up a little bit. <clears throat> we loved her. We loved her. You didn't love me for her. Let me do the talking. You're trying to finish my sentences. No. We loved her because we were her, we were her pastor Correct. before she even saw you. And I had a relationship with Vanessa right. before you and before us. And yeah. We loved her. Right, right. You, you're proving my point. You had to love her. No, you were trying to say something else. Right. No, no, no. We, we, we loved her, period. And the conversations through med school, not just with her own parents, but with Pastor Linnell, right? Yep. She saw you, right? First. You saw her. Yeah. Right? And there was a bit of an age difference and some other stuff going on. Yeah. So we're telling her first, he's a boy now, girl. Boy. He's got some growing up to do. Don't look at me like that. I ain't so, looking at you no type of way. He's got some growing up to do. He so does. we said to her... We said to her, don't, don't slow down. Don't slow down for him. And don't we told speed you, up. don't speed up for, for her. her. If this comes together, it'll be God. Correct. But it took eight years. Correct, Amundo. It's brilliant, right? And but it now was your worth, point was. And it was worth the wait. Yeah. Y'all ain't got to tell me my wife is dope. Okay, so. <laughs> We just, to... we just hope her father feels that way about you. You. But this is the thing. I put in work with Mr. Victor. I love you, sir, if you're watching or if you're watching this later and, on. And you didn't put in work. 
you're going to be working for the rest of your days that you have his jewel. Most definitely. That right. goes without saying. Y'all making me look terrible. But no, Joshua. Number three. Go stop ahead. Stop saying that. We're, we're, people need to hear. Yeah. You don't just get that man's daughter and stop. You are to honor that father and that mother for as long as you are sucking air. Yeah. Write that down. Because too many of you guys keep snatching these sons and daughters and taking them and putting them in your bed and telling them no more of your mother and your father. What rubbish. So we have to say things like that. You want to help your brother out, Callie? Is he all right? Boy, no way. Okay. Boy, Are we no going way. to number four now? But no, let me finish, please. Number but three. I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. I want to jump down to verse 21. And be sure to take on board enough food for you and your family and for all of the animals. So Noah did everything mm-hmm. exactly as God had commanded him. Yeah. The purpose of family is to build a vehicle that gets you from where you are mm-hmm. to where God desires for you to be. True. The reason why you are building your family is so that you can fulfill the purpose that God has for your family. But what gives God the joy is when he sees something come from your hands. When he can look at what you made, look at your family and say like, you know what? That's good. (laughs) You're building your family to take you to where God wants you to be. So you got to do it right. We have to do it right. Mm. That's so good, Josh. (laughs) And family starts, we keep talking about family. Well, family starts with a man and a woman. You are a family unit at that point. You are a family unit if someone, you know, God forbid, passed away and you have to take on the children or whatever. You are a family. And how you start will matter how you end. So every layer before children Husbands, love your wife. How are you going to love her children if you didn't love her? So y'all need to, we just need to chill out and enjoy the season that we're in. Because if we don't, we get to start overlapping and we get behind. We've got to make sure that every season of our lives is healthy. So we don't become traumatized live in regret the woulda, shoulda, coulda. And then if you're, you're, the husband and wife is not healthy in your relationship, what happens is when children come, instead of her turning to you that you've been so mean to her, she's just going to cuddle with the kids more. And you're going to be jacked up for a long time. So let's unravel this stuff. Let's, let's become sober about family. I can't give to Callie what belongs to Joshua. So we got to unravel these wires in our relationships in the house so we can breathe, so the hearts can stop palpitating and all this stuff, so we can see each other right. You are a boy. You are a girl. This is your father. Those British accents always get me. I am your mother. I don't want to be your girlfriend. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I am your mother. I am your... What are you saying over there? Um, you have to bring yeah. She keeps trying to reinforce this dynamic, and I appreciate it. She will always be my mother. But it's been the coolest thing to turn, like, 24 and 25... And she's become my best friend. And that's why I hate when she says that, because I really do get mad. Like, I, you're my friend. I don't have to be your best friend. That's fine. <laughs> but, like, you really are my best friend. You know, like, I don't know. Because I think in relationships, you're looking for um, that accountability or that, that person who really has your best interest is hard. And right now, when I look around... A lot of my friends, they can hardly figure it out for themselves. So it's just so comforting to know, like, this girl right here, yeah, yeah. That's my best friend, for real. (laughs) So, yeah, 
that was just me getting frustrated because she swears, no, she promises, she <laughs> says that she's not my friend. But she is. Okay, so number four, and I'm going to do it right. I'm going to honor your hard work. Number four is, <laughs> this is going to take everyone's, everyone's participation. Yes. Whoosh. Yeah. This is going to take everyone's participation. This is number four. This is number four. This is the last one. This is the last point I'm in done. your notes. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> okay, so verse 13. Verse 13 says, Genesis 7, verse 13. I'm going to go to 13. Are you going to be all right with that? I'm okay. On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, they entered the ark. They all entered this ark together. So this is the part where you guys wanted to finish up the sermon by talking about everyone has their part. So what's y'all's part in our family? So really quick, can, can I paint a picture for you? Mm -hmm. Can you throw up this art? So um, a 16th century Italian painter, his name is uh, Jacopo uh, Bassano. How many of you guys have ever seen like the tapestries and the paintings on the ceilings? So long story short, artists were reading the word and they got these pictures in their heads and they decided to do the impossible and paint things upside down. This is a picture that he wrote, I mean a picture that, that he drew and he is, he's responsible for taking the word of God and illustrating it. Now how many people do you see in this photo? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. This is Noah. Noah's wife is here. Noah's sons are here, here, and here. Mm -hmm. And then there's three other women that are here. They, they all kind of look the same, but they're all here. It's really interesting because whenever like you read the word of God, how many of you guys ever find gaps? Like you like, wait, wait a minute, case in point, Cain and Abel got married and you're like, to who? Like, where did these mystery women come from? Sometimes the reason why that blank space is there is because God is covering. There are some areas in your life where people will not be able to account for what happened because you were able to build in private. Some of the best seasons in our lives were areas where we felt like nobody saw us, we felt like nobody was coming to help us, but we realized that God was covering us from people that actually wanted to destroy our boat and not help us build it. So this picture is so important because even though Noah is putting the door on the boat, the rest of his family is helping him with every other part. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to take all of us. Wow. Um, and I, I sit here as a representative in this family as the mother, the female part of it. And I was thinking, what could I say? We keep talking about everybody's got their role and their place in the family to play. And I thought, if, if you guys could put up Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9 in the Message Bible, and I want us to read this together, and then I'm going to make some quick points, and uh, I think it will sum up my position inside of the family. Uh, so if you, can, if you have your phones, you can go to Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9 in the Message Bible. And this is referring to the role of the mother. And it says this, it says, write these commandments. If you have it, read it with me. Write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside of you and then get them inside your children. Talk about, Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into the bed at night. Oh, so good. Tie them on your hands and foreheads as a reminder. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your homes and on your city gates. And we know that the Jewish community, they actually do this, and we have one at our home. And it's not like the doorbell. This is put in a, in a sacred place that the family, when we see it, we are reminded. But this is a, a, a pivotal uh, point of the scripture that, that reminds us that we are always building. There should always be a sound of a hammer, a chisel, or something, a, a drill in your family that we know that we're building. 
But as a mother, just as God made the role of a diligent dad clear, he's also made it clear for being a mother, a godly woman. Listen to this. This is something from the Lord. God made the wife, the mother, to represent the heart of the home. The heart of the home. But she made daddies the head of the home. Head, heart. You've always talked about the neck. That, the oh world, the world talked about the neck. That is so Snapping good. Snapping and cracking and popping and all that. But the word of God says, women, in Proverbs, so the 31st good. woman, that we are the heart. We set the atmosphere. The we, we provide a safe haven for Callie and Joshua's and the people in our family. Wow. It's like an aroma. It's like the Garden of Eden, Eve. You provide an atmosphere. Let me go on. And the scripture identifies that the husbands, as the head of the marriage, uh, similar to the wife, that we have the responsibility to be three T's, three key responsibilities. We are teachers. We are trainers. Mm. And if you teach well, because you can't train unless you teach, as I look at Jeremy, then you should have what? Transformation. You should see your teaching. You should see the fruit of your training right in front of you. Now, moms and dads, when, you don't, when you're seeing stuff in the offspring that you don't want, go back and check your teaching. Check the consistency of your training. And as long as we're here, we still have opportunity to redirect everything that we don't want to see. So that, uh, th that th we are what, women? We are teachers, trainers, and it leads to what? Transformation. So here are the functions of a mother. I know I have, I can fit into these. I'm going to go fast. We are world's best chefs. We're the household nurse. We're the financial controller. We're the weather projector. Wear an undershirt. It's cold outside. We're the love doctors. We got to talk about Vanessa. Uh, how, how do you deserve her and all this kind of stuff? You know, Bay, how are we doing? The, the, the love gauge. We're the emergency 911 operator because daddy is snoring, but mama's always going to answer. We're the, we're the transportation and the Uber service. We're the home security and alarm system. We're always on our knees praying in every season of your life. We're the event planner. We get you where you're supposed to be. We're not only the event planner, but we're the set up and we're the take down. We're the cleaner, the cleaner woman. Woo! Yeah, that's who we are. And then we're, we're also the home security and the alarm system. Do you know we're what that song means? Yes. We're the design, I don't know, but it sure did sound good. I don't know. Okay, listen, listen, listen. This is my last one. I'm going to stop. We're the home security alarm system. Listen, Callie, you need to hear this. We're designed to detect intrusions such as unauthorized entry. Sometimes when your mother is saying, that girl, it may, you may think she's your girlfriend, but you need to get rid of her. She can't be your best, uh, you can't be your maid of honor and all that kind of stuff. So we do all of that. That's just a few things we do. Thank you. Okay, since she going to be, uh, anyway, so as, as a son, I guess, mm -hmm. especially, well, I won't even speak as a son, as a firstborn, any firstborns in the building? Woo -hoo! Wow. Okay, but how do you really feel? <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough. Because being the first one, you're the first model. You were the first model of the teaching and the training and the transformation. First and foremost, I want to um, shower you with grace, that there's a different grace that's on the firstborn. Because if anything and everything happens, it rests on us to carry the mantle. So I'll be very, very quick for me, when it comes to building our boat and our family, I know that for me, I'm a risk taker. Um, I'm the one that jumps and then builds wings on the way down. Mm. And then when I hit the ground, I, get, I dust myself off and get back up. So that creates a lot of headache and turmoil for my family, but they need that from me because I'm the only one willing to jump off the cliff. Did you hear what I said? 
Sometimes if what you do scares your family, if you communicate it, it's still gonna, it's still gonna scare them. But every family needs somebody that's willing to jump off the cliff and trust that God is gonna let them fly. Because the grace that's on you as the firstborn is being able to trust God even when it fails. And let me tell you, a lot of what Joshua does fails, but guess who never does? God. So parents. I'm never embarrassed when it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out a lot, Miss Jessica, but I'm never embarrassed. There was nothing that you could do that would make me blush. Number one, because of melanin, but number two, because I'm a strong person. You are, you are strong because, look, how many of you in your family, you're the risk taker? Doesn't matter if a lion's in front of you, you'll go at that thing with a toothpick, come on. When you learn how to do that within a container that doesn't embarrass your family, we're able to build a lot. Mm -hmm. All of you that have your hands up, if you're, a risk, if you're a risk taker, I pray the grace of God on you that when you fail that you would not be embarrassed. I pray that any and every enemy that you see, every animal that you see, every demon that you see, that you would be courageous to destroy them. Every single generational curse in your family. If you're the risk taker, I pray that you be like David, that you would take the sword and chop off Goliath's head. I pray that you would have the strength of Samson. I pray that you would have the vision of a Martha, that you would be able to worship like a Mary, that if you are a risk taker, that God would be behind you. And all the risk takers in the room said, Amen. Well, in the midst of all of the seriousness, my job as the daughter is to have fun, okay? If nothing else, I'm a crack a joke, okay? If nothing else at the table, in the family meeting, it don't matter, like, we gotta laugh somewhere in here. So, I'm um, in charge of the fun, would y'all agree? Absolutely. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that you're not moody. Right, oh my God, yeah. Uh Ah. Yeah, we had some things to work through. I was a little teenage girl in high school, and I woke up with an attitude for no Every reason, day. okay? And pre prepare for that. I hope it does not happen in y'all's household, but unfortunately, it happened in ours, and I take full responsibility for my attitude. <laughs> but has it turned around? Can anybody attest? My Nana, can you attest? It has turned around. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, so, yeah, aside from having fun, I think in my family, personally, I s serve best as a mediator and a moderator. I, I would think. agree. I would and, agree. And um, because if you, when you go to law school, and if you're ever in like a courtroom, or even your professors, as you get to your second and third year, like when you go to answer questions, they'll call you counsel or counselor. Right. Because what they're teaching you in law school is how to communicate, how to ask questions how to think and how to hear and how to sift through information and how to analyze information and then how to apply the information that you hear. So luckily for them, I get to bring all of that <laughs> to our table. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say something though? We are praying for your husband Man. right hey, bro. now. Hey bro. <laughs> You call me collect, fam. But I want to tell you something, and the people are here, but I want to edify it just like how dope you are. So really quick, I don't know if you remember when we were kids when we said like, at some point in time, you're going to take over the church, blah, 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 and I'm going to do, you didn't know what you were going to do. And remember what you said? You said at some point in time, we're going to be able to look at each other and say like, hey, bro, you did it. I just want to, I want to give you your flowers. You are doing an amazing job. And I agree. I agree. Because in so many different areas in this transition, we work together all day. We do this all day, what you see here on, you know, like we're building, we're, we're building a family. But Callie is able to objectively communicate to us on behalf of the other. Dad did this, and she'll say, but did he get coffee that day? Did he sleep? What, did, what was his schedule? Well, actually, Joshua, this is what he was saying. And you're actually able to allow us to communicate. This transition is really working in this way because you help us communicate. Thank you. Yep. Sorry. I, no, for real. Absolutely. Like, there have been moments where, like, I'm in tears in a conversation. And I'm like, why don't you understand me? And I look at Callie, and Callie says, what my bro trying to say is this. What you ain't going to do. I mean, it's, and it just, it does something. It does some. And I'm a words of affirmation guy. Don't hug me. Don't kiss me. Don't, like, tell me. And that, that does something for me. So thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, you look at us. You can pay and, him and, later. And, and maybe, maybe you look at us. We don't want to assume that you do. And you might think that we are a very successful family, that we have some stuff. But I want to go on the record today and let you know 
our greatest, most valued treasure is this. Josh mentioned giving flowers, but I don't know how other people live in their homes, but I can, I can testify that this man is a righteous man, that he does what is necessary to stand before God, first for himself and on behalf of this legacy, and we appreciate that about him. And doing that, we are joined together to see the fruit of our labor, the consistency of our righteousness together in alignment with the Word of God, that in this dark, chaotic, whacked out world, that we can return to God gifts that He's given us in a son and a daughter. Those are our most expensive expensive and rare gifts that we have on this green earth. And I am mighty glad, happy with joy to be able to say, I think God has done an amazing job with the Williamses. Yeah. Um, this is the thing I love. The part I play is real simple. Uh, the word husband is the, uh, what's the right word? It's the conglomeration of a real phrase in, in Hebrew. And it really means the house bond. The house bond. So the husband is the house bond. Hmm. I bond the house. I bond all y'all together. I tell y'all, you got you to gotta live right. I tell you, you got to love one another. I uh, say, we have to argue. We have to argue. We have to get uncomfortable. And then we have to come together. Oh, wow. We have to put our money together. We have to, we have to be together. If we are together, mm. it will work out. Even if I die and it hasn't worked out yet, because I was the house bond, in my generations, it will work out for me. That's the only role I wanted to play. The only thing I ever wanted was to be a, and I told this woman, Callie, I told her, I told her, I told her, told her. She turned me down. You were in high school getting ready to go to college. And I said, have you seen our kids lately? She said, yeah, I've seen them. I got to go get Callie some stuff and Josh needs this, that, and the other. I said, no, have you looked at them lately? She says, no, what are you talking about? And I started describing y'all. She said, they are pretty dope. And I said to her then, I said, we need to have more children. And she gave me that look right there. She's like, and then she said, you better, you better, Kyla, this is what she said. She said, Ron, she said, all my sons. She said, you better go and spend time with your spiritual children. <laughs> So this is why we did this today. Give me some nice music, Chad. God, you should have had more kids. We should have had at least five more. Follow the blueprint. Oh, but you know how much less work we would have had to do? You know, I'm, I'm serious. Boy. We would have had a doctor, a lawyer, a minister, an advocate, a president. We would have had a school teacher. Like, we would have had all seven mountains you in the You don't crib. know the price of the oil. For the nine months. That was a choice you in made. In my Alabaster. Okay, all right. Yeah, I don't care about any of that. We wouldn't have had to work as hard. <laughs> okay, so. To have a big brother, I mean, Joshua, I hey, you, you and Vanessa. Oh, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> you got big brothers all over this place. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Are there any families this morning... <laughs> Are there any families here with us this morning 
and you would like prayer for clear purpose for your family. You want to know what you're building. You want to know, God, we're in the kingdom, but our family needs to really know why we are together. We want to know. That specifically, we want to pray for folks. If, and this is the last thing we'll do, if you're here, whether you're single, married, divorced, you're your grandma raising kids, your whatever that looks like, and you and you would just like for someone to stand with you about prayer for the purpose of your family, we're going to allow you to come to the altar right now. You can stand and come. And as soon as everybody is here that wants that kind of prayer, we'll release the rest of you to get your children and make your way. But we want those who want prayer to come now. And we're going to try to pray for as many as... Um expeditiously as we can so pray and then make sure that you know that there's others Hallelujah. so the ushers will help you get in the right position we're praying for purpose can why are we here Chris can Dana come what's the call of God on our family what's the call of God on our family mother Alice you can roll up and pray what's the call of God on our family Hallelujah. What's the Thank call of God on our family? I hope you saw what a mess we are, so you can't be worse oh, off than us. <laughs> God has decided your family needs to win. Thank you, Jesus. So get your family huddled and just Hallelujah. stay right here. We're going to make sure we get to you and your family, all right? Uh, for those of you who are, you're okay staying with us and praying with these families, even in your purple seat, we welcome you to do so. The rest of you, we're going to allow you to go home. Thank you, Jesus. Right? Let me bless you. Let me bless you. Bless you. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who's above every God. We pray that he'll smile on you, that he'll bless you, that he'll keep you. We pray that he'll be very gracious to you. We pray that his love will follow you in all that you do. In the name of Jesus. Be blessed.